Crystal here and welcome to Homemaking on the Homestead. Today I am sharing with you three Dutch oven recipes that I think you're really going to enjoy. Uh, I've been, this winter I have taken out my Dutch oven several times. Uh, I have a cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, it's not the new, newer type that are coated with an enamel. I bought this many years ago but I really enjoy it a lot. I will certainly leave a link to the one that I have if that interests anybody. One of the great things about cooking with a Dutch oven is it makes a very nice even heat and it holds in a lot of moisture. So the first recipe that I'm showing you is for a Dutch oven roasted chicken and it has been by far the most moist chicken I have ever made. So I highly recommend this recipe. <laughs> To begin with, you'll need a three to four pound chicken, a few potatoes, and your favorite seasonings. I picked some Italian seasoning, garlic and herb, salt, some seasoned salt, and a little pepper for mine. I chopped my potatoes up into approximately quarters so they were all kind of the same size. And I put about half of them at the bottom of the, of the Dutch oven because I wanted the chicken to sit on that and I wanted also the juices to kind of um, come down and help season and flavor the potatoes as well. Then I went ahead and seasoned my chicken and I seasoned it pretty liberally. You can use whatever seasonings that you prefer um, and like I said I just do them fairly liberally just to give lots of flavor. Once I had got my seasonings all on there, I just kind of rubbed them all in. If you had time, you could put it in the refrigerator and cover it and just let it sit a little bit longer with the rub. At that point, I put my chicken into the Dutch oven on top of the potatoes. And then I took the rest of the potatoes and just kind of pushed them around the edges of the chicken. I put the lid on and now you're going to bake this at 375 for an hour. My chicken was a little bit larger than 4 pounds and so I baked it for about an hour and 15 minutes. I think it was maybe close to 5 pounds. At that point you're going to remove the lid and then you're going to put it back in the oven and let it cook for another 30 minutes and without the lid so it can brown up nicely. Then you're going to take a temperature check to make sure it's reached at least 165 degrees. I served that up with the potatoes and some roasted veggies on the side. It was a really good dinner. This Mexican hamburger rice bake is done mostly on the stovetop and then the last part I put it in the oven. Uh, and the last part just simply is adding the rice and, the, and your chicken broth um, or water and you could finish it off on the stove if you uh, stove top if you wanted to. I put it in the oven. I had to go outside and do some things and I didn't want to have to babysit it and so I just put it in the oven and I really enjoyed that. It made it very simple. It only took about 20, 22, 25 minutes and the rice cooks up perfectly and the, the whole casserole was, went together very quickly, very easily, easy and it, it tasted amazing. I started by dicing up half of a medium sized onion and then cooking that with the hamburger. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to one of my best friends, Lori, for sending me this meat masher. It was really a sweet gift and I have absolutely loved it. Um, she's also a blogger and has a great homemaking blog, so I, that'll be linked below as well. I added the onions and cooked that up until the hamburger was done, drained the grease, and added some taco seasoning. I also added some frozen corn and some salsa. And you could just use your favorite brand of salsa. Any type of salsa would work just fine. After I got that all stirred together, it was time to put the rice in. And I added chicken broth. You could also just use water and maybe some bouillon cubes or a little bit more salt. 
At that point, I stirred it all up, brought it to a boil and covered it and stuck it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 22 to 25 minutes. This was absolutely so easy and so good. We really, really enjoyed it. At that point, I just stirred it up. The rice was cooked beautifully. I took some of my newly favorite Mexican blend cheese. I just bought this at Costco not long ago and really have loved it. And I sprinkled the top. You can put as much or as little on there as you would like. We like cheese. We like it to be nice and cheesy. And this flavor, uh, cheese is so flavorful. Anyway, I put the lid back on so the cheese could melt. While that was kind of melt, melting and sitting there, I chopped up a few more things to top the casserole with. Uh, some tomatoes, some, <clears throat> some green onions, and some cilantro. You could put any kind of toppings you want on it. Even some sliced olives would be good. Anything that you might put on a taco. This was just a delicious, cheesy uh, casserole filled with all kinds of Mexican flavors. And it was hearty and just hit the spot on that particular winter day. Then I topped it with all my little toppings that I had cut up. When we actually went to serve it for dinner, um, I also added some sour cream on the top. I think if you try this meal, you'll really, you'll enjoy it. We served it with tortilla chips, salsa, and a little side salad. This last recipe for chicken stew I am using the chicken that I had left over from the roasted chicken that you saw at the beginning of the video. So you could use it, do it that way, or if you have cooked chicken from another meal, you could do that, use that. Or you could even cook up some chicken breast and dice it up and use it for this recipe as well. For this meal, I just kind of used a variety of vegetables for it. I had some peas and carrots, green beans, and some vegetables that I began by sauteing in oil <clears throat> so that I could uh, soften them up a bit. So I have onions, peppers, some mushrooms. I also had a couple of potatoes that I was throwing in. If you want your stew thicker than what I end up, you could add more potatoes. I was trying not to get too much volume so that we were eating it for days and days and so that's why I just did two potatoes. I also like to dice my chicken but that's not necessary. If you uh, want to shred it you could do that. Whatever your preference is. At that point um, I put some oil in my hot Dutch oven and kind of stirred that around and let those veggies get nice and soft. Then I added my frozen peas and carrots, my can of green beans, chicken and my <clears throat> and my chicken broth my chicken broth was homemade but you could use store-bought or water and bouillon cubes or whatever your preference is I added a little salt and some seasoning salt my typical spices that I tend to use for everything my garlic and herb seasoning which I really enjoy and finally I put the potatoes in there I let all this come to a boil and cook until the potatoes were nice and soft. Once the potatoes were cooked, I felt like I still had something that was more soupy-like, which would have been fine too. I was just kind of hoping for more of a stew or kind of aiming for that. So I took a little cornstarch and cold water and put that in there. You could also just mash up some of the potatoes that are in there and that would have thickened it up also and then at that point I let it cook for long enough to thicken up and I dished it up this turned out really good we really enjoyed it I just served it with some French bread and a salad 
Thanks for watching this video. If you happen to try one of these recipes, I hope you come back and let me know what you thought of it. Uh, and as always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like my content, would you consider subscribing? That means a lot to me. All right, guys, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.